Tonight's silliness is accompanied by Skull Rock Stout from Sleeping Giant Brewing Company in Thunder Bay, Ontario. They describe it as a slightly sweet stout with a rich green and chocolate flavor. Five all natural ingredients. So today I'm going to play with this little inverter board that I got from eBay. I'm not holding out a lot of hope that it's going to be good, going to be safe, going to deliver on its promises. So the first thing I think I will do is try and power it up before I reverse engineer it and figure out how it works and everything else. So it's got uh, plus and minus 12 volt inputs there. So I'll just quickly solder some wires onto here and see what happens. Now there are some through holes for these, but I'm just going to kind of blob it on there. I'm not going to be too particular, too precise with this. Only enough to keep myself from, you know, dying. And according to the eBay page where I got it from, you connect the output across either A, A and B terminals or A and C terminals or B and D terminals, depending on how much wattage you want it to supply. So first, I'm just going to turn it on quickly and see how much current it draws just quiescent like that. About 73 or 74 milliamps. Okay. So next we'll bring in a voltmeter and see what happens. So across A and B. Hmm. I think I'm going to fix this down a little bit more solidly so that it doesn't flop around while I'm trying to test it. Okay, let's try that again. So I'm on volts AC across A and B. It's seeing somewhere over 300 volts. Okay, I'll get a different meter. Right, let's see if the Kaiwits can do, uh, do this. So across A and B. The hell? Wow. I don't understand. This thing claims to be able to take up to 600 volts AC. I don't understand what's going on here. Okay, jankiness continues to ensue here. I have a couple of wires tacked onto the A and B outputs, which according to the eBay page says that is a 20 watt 220 ish volts um, I've got it connected through this into this 15 watt 120 volt incandescent bulb so it may not survive forever at uh, 220 volts but it should survive for a little while at least long enough for us to see what happens I'll just connect my voltmeter in there and then reconnect this and push the button. Oh, we have a light glow there. Really light glow. And we have... That's not even registering. Hmm. But there is some voltage there. Just not a lot. How can I measure that? Oops. It stopped. Oh. And it's drawn this down. It's current limiting at 2 amps input. Okay. Well, let's crank the current limit up and see what happens. It said 8 volts is about the minimum, voltage, minimum input voltage that it should uh, work at. So. Wow. Wait, are you seeing smoke? I'm seeing smoke. What's the smoke coming from? One of those transistors has melted itself right off the board. And it landed itself on the floor. Huh. Okay, that's enough of that, I think. <laughs> I'm going to guess that that thing is smoking hot, so I'm not going to be stupid enough to touch it. How about its partner there? No, it's fine. Um, there's no power coming in here. 
Uh, let's get an insulated-ish screwdriver and spark that capacitor there. Not that it's a very uh, high capacity one. Well, I guess it's decided to partially disassemble itself. So I'm going to uh, reverse engineer this thing. And I took a couple of photos earlier so we can use the big Clive method. Um, this is already flipped over. So that inductors pads are there and there. So I will spend a little bit of time uh, doodling on this and figure out a schematic and I will be back. Well, that was a bit of an exercise. It's uh, not as straightforward a circuit as I thought. Well, it kind of is, but uh, after redrawing this thing a few times, I think I've got it figured out. And I got tired of redrawing it so when I got the diodes wrong, so I just had to uh, do that. So we have the positive and minus voltage in, 12 volts, no, 8 to 12 volts it says. We have two PNP transistors. They are NECA1441, which are a PNP transistor. Now, my brain, for whatever reason, prefers to think in NPN. So this that's part of what took me a little bit, a little bit of time to figure this out. But anyways, um, two, uh, what are they, 5 amp, 25 watt PNP transistors. Each one has its base tied uh, one to the positive rail, one to the negative rail through a 1K resistor. These little resistors there and there. And I made another mistake. There is an inductor, this one here, between the negative voltage and the center tap of the transformer. This transformer has actually got three windings on it. Um, the main primary is this uh, center tapped winding here. Um, so ground path through there through an inductor. Um, both of the emitters are tied together and tied straight to the positive rail. The two collectors go to the opposite ends of this transformer. And then this smaller, it's probably actually a secondary winding, but I drew it on the primary side just for convenience of the drawing. But it will be acting as an output rather than an input in this case. So when it comes on, the resistors pull the bases of the two transistors to either rail. Uh, the bottom one gets pulled to uh, the positive rail, turning it off. The top one gets pulled to the negative rail, turning it on, which sends positive voltage through there. It's on through there, through the transformer and to ground. That induces a magnetic field into the winding of the transformer or into the core of the transformer rather, which induces a voltage into here. That voltage depending um, is going to send the base of one transistor high and the other one low. And if I've drawn it correctly, and if the windings of these transistor transformers are in the same direction or in the correct direction, that should turn off the transistor that is currently conducting and turn the other one on. Then that one is conducting. It sends positive voltage through the winding to ground creating a magnetic field in the opposite direction, flips that the opposite direction, turns off that one, turns on that one. The timing, AKA the frequency is basically determined just by how long it takes this magnetic field to build and collapse. As far as I can tell, uh, there's a capacitor, this yellow guy here across the transformer, 0.01 microfarad, 275 volts. That one I think is just cutting down on weird high frequency stuff and just keeping this to, a uh, to it's normal where it, it's fundamental frequency, getting into the higher frequency crap. I think 0.01 probably, I don't think that's, a t that's part of the timing. Feel free to argue in the comments if I'm uh, completely out to lunch on that. Anyway, that's the primary side. So we've got a magnetic field that's building and collapsing in opposite directions here. That is creating an AC waveform of some description on the secondary, which goes out to this cluster of four diodes. 
So the outputs of this thing, it claims on the eBay page, A and B, if you take your output across A and B, is your 20 watt output. So if the voltage is going in this direction, it's going out there and basically nothing. So this is, there's going to be you know, 0.6 volts in that direction. If the, if it's going in the opposite direction, it'll be going through here, out B and A. So you've got basically the transformer winding and one diode. So that's going to be kind of square wavy. It's not going to be nice and sine wavy at all. Well, yeah, half of a sine wave, I guess. A si uh, yeah. A sine wave in one direction uh, in one polarity and nothing in the other. So a bunch of camel humps. Yeah. I should have thought about this before I started recording. Anyway, um, the 15 watt, uh, output goes across A and C, A being that into the transform and C being through this, uh, 223 one kilovolt capacitor, uh, which is 22 nanofarads. That's like a dropper capacitor, basically. And the third potential possible output is across B and D, these two here. So again, that is the transformer winding. Um, and it's going to be more or less a sine wave with a bit of a, uh, but of a one volt dead bend right around zero. So a little bit of uh, crossover switching kind of looking on the scope. If this thing survived long enough for me to actually put it on the scope, which it didn't. I'm not quite sure what else there is to say about this thing. And I'm also not quite sure why that transistor smoked so hard. Maybe I maybe my light bulb was too much of a load for it. That seems odd. It was about half the rated, uh, wattage that I was, well, no, what was it? It was a 15 watt bulb, but it was running lower than that. And it was across the 20 watt output. So, well, maybe I was drawing it down. There was a huge amount of current being uh, drawn from the 12 volts. I think it was, what was it at current limiting before I finally shut it down? I think it was about four or five amps uh, when it started smoking. Anyway, that was never intended to be something that I was actually putting into production. I was mostly buying it just for the reverse engineering, which I did the smoke show earlier and it getting hot enough to melt the transistor right off the board. Uh, that was just a bonus. I hope that was mildly amusing. It was interesting to me, um, taking the time to, uh, reverse engineer this thing and figure out this circuit, because this isn't an oscillator configuration that I had commonly seen before. So it was kind of neat to, uh, do the, the brain sweat part and, uh, figure out what's going on. And it did take me a few pages of redrawing it a few different times to, uh, to get it right. But, uh, I did in the end, I think, um, yeah. Questions and comments, uh, arguments, complaints down below in the comments section as usual. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.